Oh, whoops. There we are. There, let's move that down. Whoop. Spooky Halloween. It's the Halloween edition. <laughs> point that down we already got wow we already have 10 people <laughs> 17 people rack them up rack them up hello fully pinned media what's up fully pinned media what's that sam what's up to them oh Responding to all your followers. <laughs> this is Dimka, fully pinned media. Oh, Dimka, he's he, this guy is one of our best fans. Right on. Because I'm going to demonstrate putting it on. Okay. okay, we got 50 people watching. We should probably just go. Oh, yeah, 51, 22 likes. Can they hear us right now? Yeah, well, they can totally hear us. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> We're building up suspense till 9 o'clock. <laughs> Showmanship. Lights, lights, here, lights, make it look lights. like you got spotlights here. Woo! Hold on, Jerry. <laughs> Share sure, it. Hola, Jerry. Oh, hell no. Give it to us now. The live stream thing is working, man. Where y'all at? Where are we, Sarah? Are we allowed to say where we're at? Where? Yeah. yeah. We are in Sanford, Florida. The good old Sanford, Florida. Oh, they already Los, know? Los Angeles, California. Hang on, that thing. Home of uh, Taco Bell. Okay, Del Taco. And Taco Bell. That's true. Taco Bell? Don't make fun of Taco Bell, dude. Uh -huh. Can't tell you those kind of things until it happens. Oh, it's already live? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Hola, Australia. I'm telling you. Good day, mate. Hola. What time I know. is it in Australia? <laughs> hey, put an, my, on Sunday, put another shrimp came, on the Bobby. I had I had guys literally at nine o'clock in the morning Talk in Australia at have work one thing in common. watching my life. I can't wait feed. for this. <laughs> what up, New Jersey? All right. Is that all? All right. We do. We 
Oh, Arkansas. Okay. Well, for All the, right, for the standing camera, you're good. Brap, brap. Oh, we got PR in the house. And now. This seemed to be taking forever. We got I-4 in the background. Three, two, one. Two, one. We're gonna be here for an hour. What up, Connecticut, North Carolina, Buffalo, <laughs> Buffalo. Old Georgia. Y'all taking longer than a Yamaha to catch up. <laughs> Old Cali in the house. Washington. Washington. What's that? 30 seconds till 9. Here we go, guys. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of the what? Oh my gosh, here's the light. <laughs> um, I'm here with Cedu, so they, they're really ramping up my production value, so uh, don't expect this kind of treatment again. But hey, thanks again. I'm Kevin Shaw, editor in chief of the Watercraft Journal. You're watching the Watercraft Journal IRL, and we're really excited for today. Obviously, the big news the 2021 Cedus are out. And, uh, First, I want to do a little bit of an overview of what to expect from us. Uh, believe it or not, I had a little bit of bad luck and my laptop took a dump this morning. So you're not going to see the big 2021 overview article that's supposed to go live at midnight. Sorry guys, it is what it is. Uh, I will be doing a brief update with some teaser pictures of me out on the water. And then uh, I will be linking this article, or excuse me, this video to the article. Number two is that you're going to see... You got to talk louder. Oh, yeah, I got to... Okay. Um, number two is that the full-on overview is going to go live uh, to everyone at midnight Central Standard Time Sunday night, so technically Monday morning. All right, that pushes the Yamaha GP1800R SVHO review back a day. You can send your death threats to my email <laughs> at kevin.shaw at shawgroupmedia.com because I know all the Yamaha guys are gonna to wanna to kill me. But anyhow, we wanted to update you on that first. Now, I wanna obviously go over the big news of the day. While you guys were watching that big reveal at 7.30, I had spent the day on the new 2021 RXPXs. And uh, you can see them behind me, there's two colorations for this year. Obviously a whole new design, and we're gonna go over all the details. We're gonna show you all the neat little details that they put in. There's a lot to talk about just on the RXPX. So I'm gonna have Tyler grab the camera. We're gonna go and do some really quick overviews of a lot of the details. Then I've got Tim McCurcher here from SeaDo, and Tim's gonna correct me when I'm wrong and then show me all the stuff that I've missed. But first and foremost, as we talked about, after a after the 2011 redesign of the RXPX, it got a little long in the tooth. Racers and engineers got together and said, what can we do to make the RXPX handle better? Be uh, uh, just a race winner, absolutely one of the best competitors out there on the water. What are all the things that we'd like to tweak? What are all the things that are on our dream list? Number one was starting with the hull. And we're gonna get down, we're gonna show you some of the things that they did with the hull, all right? First, let's go to the front and we're gonna work our way back, if that's cool. All right. Let's get down here. We're gonna show there's there's a lot of family DNA here in the new T, it, the T3R hull. That's the new name for this hull, is T3R. Previous one was T3, now you got the T3R. Okay. You're seeing a lot of family DNA with the larger ST3, that pronounced keel these really aggressive strakes, your splash deflectors, all of this carries into a very surprising, I'm gonna to move to the other side, you can stay there, is 
what you're seeing is that this cove, all right, this, this, uh, this contoured cove comes out to a really nice rounded outside chine. Guys who are familiar with the ST3 will notice that this is the exact opposite of their RXTX or their GTX, because that has an almost angular 90 degree outside chine, all right? This outside chine is really round, really smooth. Why do you want that? Well, when it comes to handling, this is all surface contact. This is all surface tension. So when that ski leans over, that RXPX is grabbing full contact, just like having a drag slick tire. It's absolutely making perfect, perfect contact all right here. But it gets even better. We're gonna scoop back so you can see just above the, above the bunk here, one of the neatest features on this whole design, all right? There's a series of shelving here. And this tiered shelving comes out to a very interesting inner chine that's also serrated. They call it the shark gill, all right? This is the first of its kind ever done, running all the way down to this, to this shelf right here. I'm gonna sit down so I can get down low. What this does, this is really, really neat. Guys, if you're trying to make a corner in a tight turn, what happens is that in the old hulls, you would feel it dart a little bit because it's making so much contact that once that nose engages and you have that kind of drag on the hull, it bites and it hooks. That's great for the racers. The racers were totally hip with that. The problem is most of you guys aren't racers. So what the heck are you gonna do? What this does, believe it or not, it's actually functional. It doesn't just look cool, it actually works. And what it's doing is that it's letting air break up the surface so you're breaking up your surface tension, okay? It actually is like adding tread onto a tire. This is allowing for a little bit more give and it's a natural progressive lean in as you're pinned. And that's the key here is being pinned because previously a lot of racers would have to chop the throttle and re-engage just to keep the hull from biting and snapping too hard or what uh, like Arminio Iantosca and, and Anthony Ratatick were saying, it would dart, it would dart over real hard. This allows for a really nice progressive kind of gradual swooping turn. Really, really cool. I put this to the test today. We're out on the St. John's River and I was wide open throttle. I ate up, I ate up more gas than most anyone else who was here. And this actually does work. You can feel it. It really does engage. And what's really great is that you're seeing this natural progression from, by the way, I wanna talk about something very interesting. That keel, that run, that pronounced keel that runs at the front, gradually rolls out. I don't think I could get underneath here, but it rolls out to a semi-flat surface. That semi-flat surface, you'll feel at wide open throttle when that ski's rising all the way up and that hull has the least amount of contact it has a nice gentle roll if you take your body weight and you throw it side to side it naturally rolls so what that means is that the hull naturally is trying to find its happiest center line okay when you're in chop or you're on glass you're gonna feel that the ski tracks real straight real true and if you want to turn, it's just going to go whoop, nice and smooth. So we're really, really impressed with this hull. I haven't gotten a chance to really take it out into some really ugly water yet. Uh, tried to tried to get in the mix a little bit, but when it comes to snapping S turns, really tight chicanes, really, I'm very, very happy with this hull design. We're seeing a lot, uh, a, a lot of really positive things coming out of Sea Dew. All right, uh, one more thing that's really interesting, and we're going to work our way up is that for this new hull design, they also redesigned the intake grate, the ride plate, and it's the first of its kind to come with a polished impeller, all right? It's an all new pitch and, it's, and it comes highly polished. That's race level tech. And now it's on a, standard, uh, on a standard machine. So let's move up. We're gonna pull myself up here and let's go back to the nose. All right, so obviously just like last time, the upper deck above the bond line, this deck, pan, or this deck piece shares the same mold as the GTI or the GTR. So what they did here is, believe it or not, this is a GTI, but how cool is this new, new design? Uh, really has a kind of a neat muscular 
you know, fake air scoops, and it has a really, uh, a really sport bikey nose and hood. So it really has a lot of neat design features on it. Um, I personally am a big fan of the return of the Sea Dew Yellow. This is called Millennium Yellow this year. So we're uh, for you for you guys who like the brand loyal colors. This is your color for this year. We're going to show you the purple and manta. Is it manta green or manta yellow? Manta yellow. Manta yellow. Sorry. All right. Well, we'll show you that one after we go over this one. But let's go over some of the neatest features because it's sharing uh, because it's sharing with the GTI. It also has that big GTI storage. We noticed, or we told you before, that the new GTI actually has more storage in it. <laughs> Believe it or not, it actually has more storage than the full size ST3. It just, it, this is a cavern, a cavernous front bow. And then we're going to show you the glove box. And honestly, the glove box is massive too. But here's a neat feature. If you can come around, I'll trade sides with you. Um, it's not on this one. But the SeaDo has a neat option here. It's an accessory that you can order, and it screws in three screws. And there's an actual pocket with two zippers. One's a one's kind of a net liner. You could put like a baseball cap or sunglasses. And then it's got a big zipper that's padded, and you could put like your wallet or keys or other stuff that you don't want banging around in your glove box. And that's a neat accessory that they got here. And it's not going to get wet ever. It's super trick. It, uh, I had it on my test unit today. I actually used it. I loved it. I thought it was really cool. And it was one of those no duh accessories that you're like, oh my gosh, I have to have this. All right, so let's put this guy down. Let's move on. Obviously, we have the integrated, uh, nice little details. Sea Dew always is the best when it comes to details. You got your nice little rope tie downs. That's integrated into the deck, upper deck. Um, let's talk about the glove box since I was already talking about storage. All right, so you got a giant glove box here. I'm going to stick my forearm in here. So I'm almost all the way to my elbow in that glove box. All right, you have your waterproof phone case, put your phone in there. And you can even, if you go through the accessory group, you can even put the USB port in there and actually charge your phone while you're riding. So that's even more trick. Um, believe it or not, I had two GoPros, a 360 camera, all of their mounts, a, a Garmin GPS, and a Gatorade bottle all in here today. And I'm not joking, all at the same time, and it wasn't cramped, it was crazy. So, lots of storage. All right, let's talk about steering. So, there's actually two options for steering setups. By the way, it's like 80 degrees and like super high humidity. <laughs> so I know it's, I'm sweating to death out here, but I feel like a car salesman, like, act now, I'm just pouring sweat. But, so, your standard steering setup on the RXPX is what you see right here, okay? And color match, the color match bars, and you know, cast, cast aluminum steering neck, really trick setup, really racy, looks cool, all right? With the, with the gate or with the control pods here, but you can actually opt for the, uh, I call it the trick steering, but it's that adjustable steering where you, you pull up the tab, you slide it up, how many inches of travel is it? It's like three or four inches? Yeah, it's every bit of that. Uh, is it five inches? No, no, that's the seat. Oh, that's the seat. Okay, we'll get to that. But it has a lot of adjustment. I actually used it a couple times today when I was out in the middle of the lake. I'd pull it up, stand up. Actually works really good and, and is really good and uh, really tight, really good and secure. So it, it's... Oh, one other thing. Check it out. You notice the, handle, the hand grips. They got rid of the palm rest for the RXPX. Now you got the nice round grips. Why do you want that? Well, if you're a really racy guy and you're, you know, you're standing up, you're sitting down, you're hitting corners, you don't want that palm rest getting in the way. You're moving your hand all the way around. In fact, Arminio was telling me he actually adjusts his handle, the pods and the grips completely vertical. So, cause he's doing so much of this riding that his grips literally point down. So that's something really cool. All right. Let's talk about the biggest thing here, and we're talking about the new ErgoLock R seat. All right, this seat is what absolutely makes the new RXPX. First and foremost, I was totally blown away that SeaDo would even have the stones to come out with a one-seater. All right, that's that's a huge deal. The fact that they would even do a one-seater is just really, really bold. So I was really stoked on that. The other thing is that it looks like those GP class saddles that you see at like World Finals or at the King's Cup. What this does is that this is literally 
just wedging the rider for while well, the coves are even deeper the riders wedged in here he's not moving you're absolutely glued in the ski I mean just absolutely glued into it and it doesn't it doesn't hurt that even c redesigned the foot wedges so now it's a it's a two-tier or two, double angle foot wedge so you have the outermost and then you have an inside and what that does is that that's forcing your knee right into there so you got your foot flat you know really get your heel down put your heel down there it presses your knee in because your hip is pressed up against here so you're a 90 degree angle you're not moving you're absolutely glued into the ski it's really really tricky now here's where it gets even better not all men are created equal some of us are smaller bigger lighter than others so what do you do you can actually pull this off and adjust you have six points of adjustment you can literally be all the way up here if you're a tiny little guy or if you're a big dude all the way back here and it's rubberized I mean that's that's rope level material this is not breaking this is not going anywhere okay this is super heavy duty stuff I'm hooking my finger into here these things are super trick um, I'm six foot two 230 pounds I was back on the third to last setting so all you do is you hook it in here you bring it down and it's got this redesigned block off plate you take you take the tab you pull it ah, I'm doing it backwards here <laughs> there it is all right that's not going anywhere you can pull on it it's not going anywhere but all right you want to access the engine there's a couple really cool things about the rxpx that is shared now with the RXTX and with the GTI line. So let's take this off first. Pull this panel off, and it's got this standard, standard hooks right there. All right. Now you've got engine access. You want to change your oil, check your oil, everything that you need right here. One other thing that SeaDoo did, and you might have seen it in the presentation. Is that SeaDoo moved the engine forward and the gas tank forward? And here's another thing that's really cool: it's got the 18 and a half gallon gas tank, guys. You've got the fastest, most nimble SeaDoo now with its biggest gas tank. The gas tank out of the Fish Pro, for God's sakes. So that is, you're gonna be well, you're gonna drain that gas tank if you ride it like I do, but you're gonna be doing it a lot for a lot more hours. So this is really, really cool. Another thing, obviously is that because it has the link accessory panel, let me move this out of the way. Obviously you can put all your link attachments, everything that SeaDoo offers. I think there's like nine different link accessories now. Um, put these guys down. You take all 13 of your torque screws out and now you've got full engine access that starts right here. So you've got this massive engine access so all you tuners, all you modifiers, you guys can crawl into the engine compartment, all right? And obviously, because the hull and the deck are CM tech, it's all super smooth, all right? I mean, you're not scratching your hands up, no more fiberglass getting in your skin. Super nice, durable, repairable. So that's really, really cool too. So a lot of guys who are curious about what's the, what's the new RXPX gonna be made out of? What's, you know, what are they gonna do? CM tech, big access panel and now the center the whole pivot point of the ski where it likes to turn the engine position and the gas tank is all favoring the nose all right why is it favoring the nose because the ski is doing most of its work right about here okay I talked to Romino Iantosca today about it and I'm like what's the ski like to do he says Kevin if you're not wedged into the seat and let me put the seat back on but if you're not wedged into the seat as far as you can and you don't have your shoulders over the bars with that trim down you're not treating that you're not treating that ski right so it's really really cool that you're seeing a dedicated I mean, honestly a dedicated racecraft coming from the factory i mean this is really really <laughs> really exciting stuff so let's see what did i miss um tim get in here tell me what i missed all right, guys, All right, Tim McCurcher. 
<laughs> All right, so we're doing the whole social thing right now. So this is a very interesting thing. We're I've been tested negative three times, so All right. okay, I'm going to take this off. If I fall down, it's not going to be six foot. We'll be okay. It works. Go so, ahead. <laughs> uh, anyway, so Kevin, you hit a lot of the key points. I tried. The, yeah. A lot of the technical elements. But you know what you miss is the fun. Right. It's fun. It's fun. I mean, this thing's all about the fun. Right. So really, again, it's the epitome of the, the high performance rider. We know this is the most enthusiastic rider in the in the whole industry. So we had to have something that, that makes them proud to own, right. something proud to, to, to ride, but obviously is a lot of fun. So the whole innovations that you mentioned, all of it's to, to be able to ride it faster and be more confident cool. and have a lot more fun. And the onboard experience. Uh, this is where, again, we've got it set up as a solo rider. Right. But now we've added the, I forgot. the sound system. BRP audio. So Sorry. we have the 100 watt Bluetooth <laughs> sound system. So now, again, a Sea-Doo is really fun to ride, right? Sure. It's a lot more fun to ride with your favorite playlist. <laughs> so we've got the audio system. Now, some other aspects, you talked about the storage. Right. The storage has been expanded. Uh, over 40 liters in the okay. front storage plus the under lid organizer so we have three built-in storage options and then as you mentioned the link accessories right you could throw I mean you could throw this giant cooler onto here if you wanted to it's possible so. I guess that's <laughs> like putting a fishing rod on an F1 car <laughs> but I guess you could do that but the one thing that that um, we we're also doing is this is the ultimate performance machine now there's not a lot of one-seater Formula One or sports cars. They're at least a two-seater. Right. So this is the ultimate sports car, the supercar of the water. Sure. So you might want to bring somebody with you. All right. So I now forgot this. We can remove. <laughs> right. We can remove okay. the adjustable saddle, and now we have an optional second seat. So now with the second seat, obviously you can have a second passenger. Cool. But we did something a little bit different. The, the ergonomic team up in Valcourt and the test center in Palm Bay, the engineers, the, the strap is it's really gone. good yeah. when you're on a, on a, a regular cruise on a, one of our GTI models. But when we have 300 horsepower and a hull that handles like this, your passenger might want to hold on a little tighter. Sure. So we have a new grip. What'd you call it? The, the front. You well, called it the Bronco it's not, seat, right? It's not an official name, <laughs> no, but I like calling it the Bronco grip. Yeah, the Bronco grip. Because <laughs> when, uh, you know, when somebody's in a rodeo riding oh, a bull, yeah. like, they strap themselves yeah, in to hold the horn. on. Yeah. So this, this handle is really beefy. Yeah. I mean, it holds on tight. Actually, Anthony Redditix, uh wife was our talent in the photo shoot oh, and the funny. videos. Yeah. And she that raved about danielle raved about this handle and how good this was and how secure she felt so the so one's an option oh, well oh, that's okay i was going to ask because the it comes standard as a one seater and this is an option this is something you, you correct order. okay so uh the way that the rxpx will come standard okay. is with the one up seat some of the options will be the two up seat okay so this is an accessory gotcha. that's optional as well as as the handlebar riser as you mentioned that's an option and the under lid organizer but again all of that is to enhance the onboard experience sure so it's not all about nuts and bolts it's about on a Sunday or a Saturday you go out in the morning and you might want to go around uh, while everything's flat and do some runs through some nature trails right. and then maybe the afternoon meet up with your buddies that set some buoys out and maybe run some buoys at full speed. Right. But then at the sunset, go pick up your significant other and, and take them for a, a ride Cruise, with your two right. up seats. So you can do all that in one day. You can be the full high speed performance guy on the St. John's River like right. we were today, or you can run buoys. Or if you want to be the family cruiser guy, you know, swipe left on Tinder and go out, <laughs> then uh, I don't know if it's left or right. I've been married for 16 years. That's right. So, That's swipe right. Anyway, so, anyway, oh, no. so this is the second seat, <laughs> and you can really have an incredible experience. Hey, question about sound. Sound yes. is also an option. It's not standard, correct? 
this is an option on the RX PS. On the RX PS. So you can get it with and you can get it without. Well, certainly. Okay. So if you want to strip down, lightweight, so no frills. you're racing, I mean, if you're you going racing, shit. racing. Right. You know, and you want to reduce weight and take a, uh, take some of the non-essential or essential items off, right. then yes, you, do, okay. you don't have cool. to have the sound system. All right. Like, what Let's, do you think of the colors? Like, you talked well, about the I, colors. Well, obviously, because I'm old school and I like classic stuff, this tickles me in my nostalgia bone because you know this that at? this kind of yellow is so endemic to the sea dew brand but i was going to say let's go take a look over at the uh at the new purple now let's yeah definitely i mean the yellow it's you know with brp ski dew started as sure. yellow so we we say if you're in the brp family you have a yellow blood <laughs> and this is where if you're gonna have your epitome hero model for the year right uh, you gotta have some yellow in it. oh yeah but dude. we also brought it back 30 years believe it or not to the very first right you were performance saying performance sea dew ever launched was the 1991 sea dew xp that 91 believe it or not was i was that was a long time ago when i was talented <laughs> but i we know it's dark out no, but no, no. this is called the purple passion Purple and passion sun, and manta or, yellow. Oh, sorry, purple potion. Purple potion. But I'm very and... passionate about it. <laughs> so that's where the passion comes from. All right, from. cool. But this is purple potion. Uh, when the sun hits this, we're, we're doing it no justice No, no, right there's now. a metallic in here that's really When the neat. sun hits this yeah. color, it just pops. Yeah. And it's incredible on the water. And then we, we highlighted it with some, some uh, fluorescent colors. Right. So really, again, pays tribute to that, that night. 1991 XP. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, we cool. invented performance. Yeah. So now with the next uh, level of, of RXPX, we're, we're really paying tribute in both ways. Very you know, cool. To CD performance or BRP performance and the, the XP with this model. Very cool. All right, Tyler, you've been watching the camera this whole, or the phone really this whole time. What are some questions that we're getting for Tim or myself asking about the just the RXPX? Before we move on, I want to see if we got anything on the RXPS. One of the main questions I got was to tap on the hole, talking about how much lighter it was. Oh, hey. Said it must be plastic. No, no, no. It's, it's CM Tech, but they cut 67 pounds off of the previous unit. That brings it down to 780 dry weight. That's the dry weight, 780 pounds. Okay, so we're sub 800 now. That's really cool. And by the way, you're going to feel it. Everyone was wondering, oh, is there going to be more horsepower? You don't need more horsepower if you're cutting weight out of it. You makes it more efficient. So you're using, the, you know, the 1630 Ace 300 motor. Now you're cutting 67 pounds out of this thing, thing. But yes, it is CM Tech. It is not. It's not Polytech 2.0. All right. How about how much is it? Do we have a price yet? Ooh, is MSRP out yet? Or is that a two? Price. We're not gonna. We, we recommend everybody. Uh, Visit their local dealer or their local CDU.com because pricing is different around okay. the world. So okay. we don't want to. That's true. We, we don't want to quote any that. retail prices <laughs> that might be inaccurate in Dubai compared to right. the UK or the US. Right. But the the beautiful part of this is we are pushing up production earlier than we have in the that past. That was something you mentioned. That was really cool because I was thinking it was going to be beginning of next year, and you said it was actually more towards. Yeah, we're looking towards mid to late fall okay to uh or at least for the northern hemisphere right, right. so uh but the the southern hemisphere will get uh units earlier than normal okay do you hear and, australia and, yeah. everyone in australia did you hear that yeah. you guys are getting these first counter season will we'll get the first <laughs> the first love honestly because yeah. they're going to be able to use it in cool. florida because uh, it's, it's kind of a year-round market because we're sweating. Right now, right? <laughs> it's ridiculous. But, so uh, yeah, we're, we're trying to get the, the units in, the, in people's hands as, as faster, fast as it can. Faster because they, they want them. The demand has been insane this year. It's been a, obviously it's a really crazy year yeah. this year with these. I had mine. Mine's uh, over there. <laughs> but, I mean the the one thing that we've all seen is is people are staying home. It's the staycation. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're not spending their money on, on vacations like they were. They're right. spending their money on being home with their families. Uh, so this is where we're really seeing the watercraft industry being a great reprieve sure. from uh, escaping the, the craziness of the current times. And, Agreed. Uh, 2020 was an unbelievable year. We, it's the most successful sales a year and over 20 years for the watercraft industry and we didn't even build all we could right so uh, 
we're ramping up production now, okay. and uh, we're, we'll have units available very quick, so people will be able to get hold of this this purple passion yeah. RXPX a little That's bit earlier, right. or the Millennium Yellow. Very so cool. We're super excited for for the lineup, and we're excited to see the energy and the enthusiasm for this sport and for this uh, industry and all the people that have joined the CD Life in 2020. Tyler, you got any more? Yeah, Avery wants to know, can you raise and lower the handlebars? Uh, do we have any one of them with the adjustable handlebars? We might take the cover off of Let me take the Let's cover off. Let's see if that one has the adjustable. All right, we because, can move on until okay. then. Yeah, and we'll come back to that. Jay wants to know if it comes with a new screen. Uh, dashboard is here. Let's let's get you up with the light. The dashboard is just the standard. Here, I'll actually uh, bump it. Here, I'll bump it. There you go. Guys, it's a standard, the, the standard analog style dash. We got a biker gang driving by with all their music, so hold on. But uh, no, it just gets a pretty standard, pretty standard dashboard. We're gonna talk about that new digital 7.8 inch digital dashboard. Yeah, 7.8 inch, so that's one of the other yeah. big news items for this year is we've, uh, actually I, I won't say introduced because it's a gauge that we've been using Okay. on the spider rt for a couple years okay. now and was introduced on ski do snowmobiles uh last year but it's a 7.8 inch wide and we say wide that's it's, direct across that's not, not across. the diagonal lg and samsung <laughs> trick on how big it 7.8 inches wide full color lcd display it has an incredible amount of information your regular right. statistics on it but then the beautiful part of it is you can connect your phone and using a, a exclusive app of uh -huh. BRP Connect, you can connect your phone and the right side of the screen will be your app window. So yeah. the app window, this is where you can play your music from your phone. Right. You can also have special apps such as navigation with, where we've partnered with Wave. I was gonna ask about that, that's big news. So the Wave app, it's W-A-V-V-E. It's a navigation app uh, that's phone based but you can bring it up on your screen. And it's not just a navigation app. It's kind of cool because it's it's user-generated content. Isn't yes, it? yeah. So if you find a brand new launch ramp somewhere, you or, can mark or let's it say on a, it. Okay. a tree swing, <laughs> you can actually pin or enter that information in the app. Okay. It'll be verified, but then it can live. So it's user-driven. Uh, right app so it's it's very current that okay. way as well well if you have the whole community populating it that's that just gives it an opportunity to grow and grow and grow Absolutely. and if you and if you're using that now mind you that dash is only available on the gtx limited gtx 300. limited so okay. the, the top of the, the line the every, yeah. touring watercraft right where you have everything on it okay you know i mean now we're really getting into the weeds though yeah yeah Oh, ah, pun. Did you okay. get that? Did you I get that it. one? All right. All right. Follow me. Okay. All right. We got, we don't have a GTX Limited here, but what we do have is the new Fish Pro. And the new Fish Pro is featuring probably one of the things, well, actually, I already saw it. It's blowing up all over Instagram and Facebook, is IDF. Now, IDF stands for? Stands for Intelligent Debris Free pump system. Okay. It's another one of our intelligent design features where it's going to be kind of hard to look at it in a parking lot. Right, we really we can't, can we can't, it. we can we can talk about it. We're not going to be able to demonstrate it obviously here on a trailer. But one of the neatest things and something that I've always been kind of noodling on is, is there room possibly for a transmission on a personal watercraft? Well, it turns out CDU answered that. And what they did is that they integrated a gear driven, and it's oil cooled by the engine oil, a gear driven forward and reverse transmission. So let's, I'll show you how it works, and I'll just kind of pantomime a little bit about how it works. But what, let's just do a case scenario. So the case scenario is you're out in the shallows and you suck up a, some reeds or some grass into the intake grate. And I'm not talking like jamming it through the pump or cramming some wood into the prop you're kind of out of luck on that one. But if you kind of, you feel the intake grate wad up with some grass, some cooney grass, or some, you know, seaweed or kelp or whatever it might be, what, obviously the first thing you do, you turn off the engine. So you hit your start-stop button, you kill the engine. 
Then, with the, with the dashboard still engaged, you hit the IDF button right here. All right, that IDF button, you hold it down, it's gonna give you, it's gonna give you a prompt on the dash, all right? When that prompt gets on the dash, that you'll, you'll literally hear the transmission switch into gear and you give it some gas. What that does is that that gear drive interrupts the output shaft and literally sends, sends a dog leg over to, to a new uh, gear drive. And that gear drive reverses the rotation of the drive shaft and the prop and will reverse the prop and push those weeds or a plastic bag out of the intake grate. Again, if, you, if you're just bonkers and you wad up a bunch of driftwood into your prop, this isn't gonna solve your problem. Um, maybe learning how to ride is gonna solve your problem. <laughs> but, you know, cool, you know, if you just get some grass in there, and like you guys saw in the demonstration video, all you do is you hit the button, you goose it. Oh, one of the neatest things though, is that there's a 12 second, it's a 12 second pulse. You only get 12 seconds to do it. You can do it multiple times. And the reason why they only do it for 12 seconds is because, well, how does the, how does the engine cool itself? All right, it's using, or uh, excuse me, how does it siphon? I'm wrong, it's got its own cooling system. But what it, uh, the jet pump is its own siphon. So it's a bilge siphon. Uh, out of, and what happens if you start pushing thrust backwards through it, you suddenly start swamping the inside of your engine. I got a little mixed up on that one. So what they smartly did is now there's a ball valve that it's now just a one-way valve so that when it engages and thrust starts going through the wrong way of the jet pump, that valve is, is closed and that thrust is pushed out of the front of the jet pump instead of backwards. Yeah. What else did I miss? Oh, it's really, I mean, okay. you definitely, again, got into the nuts and bolts. I the tried. bottom line on that is that's one of the biggest irritants uh, of, a, of an owner is getting stuck. Sure. You know, getting stuck, whether it's weeds, especially in the, the Asia Pacific region, there's a lot of trash in the water. So mm -hmm. sucking up debris, it's not right. just weeds, that's right. what we call it, the, the, the uh, debris system. It, it really allows people to, when something is stuck on the intake grade and they're cavitating and and uh, it's shaking and could easily cause an overheating situation. Now, rather than jumping in the water and having to pull those that debris off of the intake, the intake grate, now they simply, at the touch of a button, they don't have to jump off, and within 30 seconds or less, uh, that reverse thrust will just blow off whatever's on that intake grate. So it basically gives everybody a lot more peace of mind. But what it does is, we're not telling people to go into every little back body, <laughs> right. but what it does is it opens up the world a little bit. Sure. So now you can explore areas that you might have been really timid to go into in the past. Right. Now you can go into those areas, especially if you're fishing. Yeah. Because again, the fish like they like that structure. They sure. like to get it in a way, and they like to get it into the weeds. So this is something, at least for this is why it's standard on the fish bro. Right. Uh, and on the, the GTX Limited, the standard. Right. Now it's also available on the GTX 170 and the, the GTX 230 okay. as an option. Very cool. So this is okay. a big technology. Yeah. I mean, the RXPX is the big beauty. That's the lipstick, oh, it's, you know, yeah. of the brand this year. But the IDF is going to have long-term benefit to a lot of people. To echo what everyone's saying, it's a freaking game changer. It's a. It's one of those. You know, a lot of people didn't see that coming. Yeah, that, a lot of that people really... saw the RXBX coming, and even some BRP oil kind of knew about the gauge sure. had ideas. But yeah, the IDF, and again, this is something. It didn't. That irritant didn't just happen. That's been an irritant oh, with the jet powered forever. vehicle for a long time, <laughs> and it's now that we've perfected it to be able to launch it. And we're super excited. About that. Okay, a couple more changes on the Fish Pro because we're here with the Fish Pro. Obviously, you're looking at the color changes. This is what Tim was joking, the salt series, because this has a little bit more of an offshore sort of look to it. There's a couple other things that they did, which I like, and I'm going to steal from this side. Oh, where's the release? Here it is. You got it. <laughs> this is really cool. They actually got a front mount on here. You know what's cool? 
The fact you just moved it from that side to this side. Well, that's the neatest So it's thing removable. Is, and everything's removable. You can yeah. obviously, just like these, if I can get my thumb in there because I'm doing it from the wrong side. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. There we you got go. It. Yep. All right. So obviously these are the same rod holders that are all over the tank, but now they have mounts here that are not only up front, but they're angled out so you can go trolling from the front. You're not having to look over your shoulder all the time. And they got you cup holders and the cup holder just, if I can put it in right, goes right in here. So that's really, that's just a neat little detail that a lot of guys were really asking for. So this is really cool. Obviously you got your big Garmin and Oh, we got the IDF. We got these new mounts. Oh my gosh, we got the new tank. I forgot all well, that. Let's go ahead and bring this cup holder back to where the drinks are. There you go. So now we can also add this cup holder anywhere where our link attachments are for sure. the rods. So we can we can just add it right there. All right. So I got to tell you guys this story. When the new Fish Pro came out, Tim called me up and he goes, "Hey, you guys want to go fishing out of Jupiter?" Admittedly, I'm a terrible fisherman. I have very little experience. He's like, don't worry, man. We'll set you all up. We'll get you all geared out. So we go out and we're all, I mean, it was me and Jerry Gaddis. And we had another guy from an offshore fisherman. I was there. A saltwater fisherman. And then, of course, Tim was leading the way. And we all had our, we had all of our bait. We had all of our food. We had all of our drinks. And when we stopped to take a, take a drink, <laughs> everything tasted like bait. We had a little <laughs> squid, uh, squid. Marinated That's right. public sauce. Oh, God. So yeah, we figured out that uh, you know the cooler is awesome. Too. Yeah, it's, it's great. A, I mean, it's a roto molded cooler, Yeti quality type cooler. Sure. Ice on Saturday, ice on Sunday. Right. Uh, but with all that space, we needed to segment it a little bit. Right. So what we've added to separate the fish or the bait right. from your lunch yeah. or your drinks, we added this. Extension. Very cool. So now it's actually a riser. So now what what somebody can do, we've got some of the ice bag left <laughs> in here, but we can add this uh, cooler extension and it's a, a five inch uh, riser. Here. Okay. So you don't need the whole cooler. I mean, no. as long as you already have the cooler, yeah. you just buy this piece. You use the same lid, you take it off the bottom, you attach it to the top, but it separates your lunch, your Perfect. food from your catch. No more fishy sandwiches. Bait. So no more squid juice yep. marinated awesome. uh, sucks. All right, Tyler, do we got any questions on the Fish Pro? Oh, uh, they or wanted to idea. see, how about top speed on both RXPX and Fish Pro? Okay, uh, well, Fish Pro is the same as it, as it was, and that was about 57. Well, we added the, the 170 last year. Oh, so that's we right. we put the new engine okay. for the two, I haven't run the 170. So we have the 170 for okay. 2021 again, and you're looking at uh, mid to lower 50s, but the, okay. the one thing the 170 did, it has a lot more torque. Yes. So when you're really loaded down, and, it, and out of all the sea models, this is the one that's gonna be loaded down more most often. Oh, certainly. So the torque that, to get up and go is, is a lot better on this one. That added displacement really uh, will help get the, the heavier ski out of this way. Now the speed on the RXPXs, uh, the top speed in North America, we still have the agreement with the Coast Guard. Correct. So we still have a limit on the top speed in, in the U.S. Uh, really where the performance gains happen, and you talked about the, the reduction in weight. Right. 67 pounds is a lot. Right. That's a lot. So with that, the previous generation 300 RXPX went 0 to 60 in 3.9 seconds. Right. So pretty freaking fast that's the, yeah. the, the new one the new 2021 rxpx with the 67 pound weight reduction the polished impeller the redesign hull the weight move now it's zero to 60 in 3.6 seconds that's so, because i remember i in the presentation you it, it's a 2.9 second zero to 50. it's quick um, i mean that'll that'll tear your arms out of your it's thoughts. quick and that's, yeah, that's another scary. reason why that the adjustable saddle is so important. Oh, yeah. Because what that really does, other than help you stay connected just in general, is it's a lot of power. I <laughs> yeah. mean, so you're, you're constantly bouncing back just little bits at a time, and you don't realize during your ride how many times you're pulling yourself back oh, yeah. up. So this seat is keeping you from bouncing back. 
So it's it's minimizing your power expenditure and you can have more fun and hopefully you can walk a little easier on Monday morning. <laughs> I was I didn't even bother to ask, does the RXPX come with launch control? Uh, yes. It does have launch so control. So all the X Very models. Cool. Okay. The, right. the launch control does return. Okay. So the way launch control works, it basically drives the, the nose down. Uh, when you're accelerating, you keep you from hopping out of the water, but it automatically, you don't have to do anything. Right. Uh, it automatically moves the nozzle up to, to ensure you get maximum top speed. Great. Again, it's one of those things that it's just to make it easier to have more fun. Are we getting all the big rig traffic? Yeah. Uh, all the noise? Sorry, hey. guys. We are right by a major highway. Yeah. How about the transducer? Is it mounted the same way as in the 2020? So the transducer is not changed. So the transducer on the 2021 Fish Bros is a through hole transducer fitting. So this way uh, it won't get caught on anything. Right. So if you do go over, even on a trailer, your transducer might get caught on something. This is a through hole transducer fitting. All right, what else we got? Any other questions, guys? Uh, will the LCD display ever become an option on the Fish Pro? We can't give out 2022 <laughs> yet. It took everything we had just to hold back our 2021 Isn't this enough? <laughs> what so more do you want? What you can always expect with SeaDoo is you will continually see innovation. And if we see something uh, being very well recepted by the community, probably can bet some form of that will make its way to other ones. Tyler, how long have we been doing this? 51, 51 minutes. minutes. All right, we'll take a couple more questions and we're gonna kill it. How about the so, carbon seal on, uh, on the RXPX? The carbon seal, it's been slightly redesigned because of the, uh, the new, or no, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of the IDF. Oh, uh, IDF, yeah, the so carbon seal on the, IDF. The, the carbon seal is basically the same design, been modified with the longer drive shaft. That's right. There's a longer drive shaft, so they've been able to make some changes there. Okay. And then the IDF I saw on the on uh, some of the paperwork was the IDF carbon seal um, because of the shorter drive shaft because of the IDF. There's an, a, a new boot housing. And it's been redesigned boot, to okay. fit with that new technology. Okay. Cool. All right, what else yes. we got? Is the new hole comfortable enough for longer rides or is it just for the aggressive? It's a good question. I, I assume that's the RXPX. And yeah. This yeah. is what we talked about. It's really the What did we do today? We did 30 miles today? No, we did 60. We did 60 miles 30, today. 31 way. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. No, it was great. But, and we were doing hard handling and then we do smooth spot, you know, smooth runs. And it was, you know, it was a lot of fun and it tracks really nice. Um, it, 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 one of the nicest things about it is that it, it's a little bit of a jack of all trades in the, in the sense that it's like, listen, if you're not cutting buoys or if you've got the back seat on there, you can scoot back, put your feet forward, and you can just cruise. Um, and it's not gonna, it's not darty at all. So, the, and, and I was riding with the trim almost all the way down. You back it back up, you get it about about neutral level, maybe even a little bit higher, and it's just cruising. It almost felt, to be honest, I was actually having this conversation with Randy Cabrera, who might be watching. And one of the neatest things was that I'm a real big fan of the GTI platform right now. The new GTI platform is an absolute winner in my view. And one of the best things about the GTI is the way it naturally tracks through chop. It's not hunting, it's not doing this, it's not erratic, it's very predictable. And those were a few of my criticisms about the bigger ST3. What I found is that the new T3R, that's the name of the hull for the RXPX, T3R, is that the T3R lean, or really shares a lot of those very natural, predictable attributes like the GTI. So the answer is yes. <laughs> How about fuel capacity? Yes. Yeah. Fuel capacity. Eight and a half, or 18 and a half gallons, man. So the RXPX does get the, the larger fuel tank that we introduced two years ago. Yeah, big old tank, dude, fill her up. Any changes to the RXTX and the Sparks? So good question on the RXTXs. So we hopefully you've watched this from the beginning. If not, we do have two new colors for the RXPX, Millennium Yellow and the Purple Potion. Those same exact new colors will be available on the RXPXs. 
So if somebody wants two yellow units, but they want a TX and a PX on a, a two-place trailer, it'll look beautiful. That's a good trailer. Uh, and Sparks, Spark gets one of the best color. You trick guys, the, the Spark Tricks gets absolutely one of the best color combinations, which is the gloss black and, is it dragon red or lava red? Lava red. Lava black red. and, and lava yeah, red. Yeah, it, it actually looks badass. It's and really, really actually, cool. actually, uh, I think we introduced 20 new wrap kits. Really? As well. Okay. Wow. We're also going to have wrap kits available beyond Spark. Oh, wow. So we're going to have some for little full size models as oh. well so people can really customize their machines there you go yeah, there's a lot of news i didn't know so, that yeah, i didn't know about the wraps we're okay. just uh, getting into this all so, right yeah we look you guys got to look forward to, to more stuff. articles coming from watercraft journal covering all the new 2021 cd all right last question uh <laughs> that's basically covering that's it. it for all the new uh new questions okay all handlebars right, they do adjust yes it's an option it's an option, an option. uh livia Wants to know about the LCD display, same as ski yeah. And which models are those on? Similar. It's on the GTX Limited only in 2021. It's similar to the ones found on ski but the apps that are going to be available for the SeaDoo are a little bit different. And we, we partnered with Wave, W-A-V-D-E, Wave app, which is a great navigational app for the, the average CD owner, and it's commercial, not commercial community driven as well so it, it, it's the same basic uh, physical gauge but it has some different features okay good great all right guys we're going to sign out this has been a lot of fun um i thank you tim for today thank you for helping me set up and the light otherwise i'd be doing this in the dark um with a selfie stick looking like an idiot so i really appreciate it uh now i'm fully lit looking like an idiot but uh, I get to go out again. I'm actually going to take the Fish Pro out tomorrow and get a little bit more on the RXPX because they're going to let me. So if you had the chance, you'd do it too. Uh, guys, just to, uh, to repeat again, um, the 2021 overall recap article, the 2021 SeaDo lineup overall recap will go live Monday morning at midnight. And then the Yamaha GP SVHO review is bumped back to Tuesday. So again, I know, I know, I know. But that's what you get for having an eight-year-old MacBook. Uh, so anyway, thanks again for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Please make sure to give this a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel. You've made our channel explode recently. So I'm very, very grateful for it. Thanks again. I'm done. Tim, thank you. Tyler, thank you. Tommy, thank you. Jay, thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. All right, we're good. <laughs> All right, kill it.